Hey everyone, Chrissy here, and today we're at the opening weekend of the Festival of the Arts in Epcot. And in this video, I'm gonna go over all of the details of this event to help you decide if this might be a good event for you and your family. So let's get into it. The Festival of the Arts takes place at Epcot during regular park hours and runs from January 12th to February 19th. And the Festival of the Arts is a celebration of all forms of art, including culinary, visual, and performing arts. When you first walk in, you'll want to make sure that you grab a festival passport. This passport will contain all the information that you need for the festival and all the different activities that are available and a full list of the festival food studios. And it even has some fun activity pages in the back where you can learn about the fascinating art of animation and the passport even has a short figment flipbook. All throughout the park, there's a ton of fun activities for kids or adults of all ages. On the walkway connecting the World Showcase and World Celebration is the Expression Section. The Expression Section is a paint-by-numbers mural that you'll be able to participate in for free. First, stop by the paint distribution booth to grab your paint. Then you'll get in line to get a sign a section where you can paint a few squares that are corresponding to your paint color. The expression section is open daily from 11 a.m. to 5, and there are several different murals that they alternate in between. When you're done painting, you'll collect a free bookmark with the completed mural on it. Make sure to stop by later in the day to be able to see the full scene revealed. Throughout the park, there are eight walk-in photo frames based on iconic works of art and animation. There are three new frames for this year's festival located on the bridge leading to the World Showcase. The new ones are a Wish Storybook, Tea Time with Penguins, and the forest scene from Sleeping Beauty. But there's others that you'll come across as you make your way around the World Showcase. Also on the bridge leading to the World Showcase are the chalk art galleries. You can watch as some talented artists create these awesome works of art. There's even a piece here that plays with some perspective. Over in this other area is a section just for kids where they can grab some chalk and try their hand at creating some art. Chalk Full of Characters also has returned this year, and this is where chalk drawings of Disney characters can be found hidden all throughout the World Showcase. So make sure to keep an eye out as you walk through the park to find these charming chalk drawings of classic Disney characters. In addition to finding the chalk drawings, there's this really cute figment scavenger hunt that you can participate in. You can purchase a map for $9.99 at select locations around the park. We always grab our scavenger hunt map at Gateway Gifts directly underneath Spaceship Earth as we walk in. The figment scavenger hunt is a really fun way to keep the kids and adults alike entertained as you make your way around the world showcase and you don't even need to finish it to redeem your prize. For this, you'll be searching for hidden framed artworks within each country in the World Showcase. These are all iconic works of art that have been reimagined to include figment. You'll need to explore the entire country pavilion both inside and out to be able to find them. There is one hidden in each of the countries around the World Showcase, and when you find all 11, you can turn in your map at Disney Traders in Port of Entry or World Traveler at the International Gateway and receive a choice of a few different figurines that you can paint, Figment or Mickey. These that I'm showing here are from 2023, so keep in mind that this year's figurines may be slightly different. Near the waterfront in the Port of Entry is the World Showcase Plaza stage, and several different performances happen here throughout the day. The schedule and show times can be found in front of the stage, and the performances include Art Defying Gravity, where you can see thrilling acts of strength, agility, grace, and balance with these amazing acrobats.
There's also visual art in performance, which is one of my favorites every single year. Watch as the artist Trevor Carlton creates a colorful Disney character with an energetic performance as he paints and dances along with music. Talented musicians will also take the stage throughout the day as well. During our visit, we got to enjoy the amazing work of guitarist Nicholas Marks, who is a staple of Disney festivals as we see him almost every year. Over at the American Gardens Theater, located at the American Adventure Pavilion, is where you can find a few more shows. A couple of times during the day is the Animation Academy, where you can learn how to draw a Disney character from a real-life Disney animator. When you enter, you'll be given a sheet of paper, pencil, and a clipboard, and the artist will walk you step-by-step -step throughout the process. Last year, we got to draw Donald Duck during our visit, and this was led by Disney animator Brian Blackmore. In the evenings, you can catch the Disney on Broadway concert series here in the American Gardens Theater. During this performance, real-life Broadway stars will perform a few hits from Disney Broadway shows for the audience as well as the hits that they're known for. As with all Disney festivals, there's plenty of food booths, or food studios as they call them during the art festival. This is where you can try a variety of unique foods. And at the art festival, all the food is art inspired and is made with creative artistic flair. Before you begin, if you flip to the very back of the festival passport, you will find the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine food stroll. This food stroll will take you on a Technicolor tour around Epcot to sample a variety of vibrant dishes. The items are all listed in the back of the festival passport and you'll receive a stamp when you purchase each one. There are six total items to try, but you only need five of them to complete the stroll and receive your prize. Since a lot of the items were the same or similar to last year's, we decided to skip this year to focus on trying more of the new items that are featured this year. But if you do decide to do the stroll, you'll redeem your prize at Deco Delights in the port of entry area. The prize is also the same as last year, so you'll get an art palette cookie as well as a mixed berry smoothie served in a plastic souvenir cup. There are 16 total festival food studios, with most food studios returning from last year. The only new studio this year is Cuisine Classique, which is located in World Discovery near Test Track. Here, you can get a beef wellington or some cast iron roasted mussels. We decided to skip the mussels since I'm allergic to them, but we did get the beef wellington, and this beef wellington comes with mushroom duck sal, prosciutto, and a puff pastry with white wine demi-gloss. And this is actually my first time trying a beef wellington, and I have to say I loved it. It was so good. Returning this year is Figment's Inspiration Station at the Odyssey Pavilion. During this festival, the Odyssey is completely transformed to be themed after Figment, who has become the art festival's purple dragon mascot. There are a few markets located in here, including Nameworks, Spin Art, and Sandbox Creations. And of course, there's a brand new popcorn bucket to collect, this year, it's modeled after the Imagination Pavilion featuring Figment. And this popcorn bucket is so cute and comes with rainbow popcorn and even lights up. Thankfully, they are doing mobile ordering again this year, so you won't need to wait in any crazy lines. So if you do want to buy one, you would just scan the QR code here on the sign, pick a time window, and you'll be able to come by and pick one up when it's ready. While you're here, make sure to try a few of the colorful food items. There's a rainbow cake with freeze-dried Skittles, 
a blueberry filled pastry tart with purple icing, which is basically a sugar cookie pop tart with blueberry filling. And this grape smoothie with freeze dried Skittles that comes served in this plastic souvenir cup. And I really love this smoothie and would highly recommend it along with the rainbow cake. Even though a lot of the food studios are the same as last year, there is still a lot of brand new food items to try. At the Craftsman Courtyard located in the Port of Entry, there are two new items. First is the grilled pork belly with salsa verde, broccoli rabe, pickled peppers, a rochelette cheese on grilled sourdough. The second new item is the grilled marinated skirt steak with caramelized onions and mushrooms, blue cheese fondue, and arugula on a grilled french roll. And both of these were excellent. I think I enjoyed the skirt steak the best out of the two if I had to pick a favorite. Also at the port of entry area is Pop Eats. New here is the Rock the Dots white chocolate and orange mousse with vanilla bean chiffon cake that comes served on this cute plate with Minnie Mouse. And this is so delicious. It is a very light dessert with a delicious orange citrusy flavor. And while we were here, we also had to try the tomato soup with pimento cheese, bacon, and a fried green tomato grilled cheese. This soup is part of the wonderful walk food stroll, and I would highly recommend getting this one because it was delicious and I only wish the cup was bigger because I wanted more of it. Over in the France Pavilion is the L'Art de la Cuisine Française food studio. Here they have a few new items to try. There's a couple new salmon items, one hot and one cold, and you can get each one separately, or if you wanna try them both, you can get this combo plate. The cold item is a salmon mousse, smoked salmon, dill, and flaxseed biscuit served cold. And the hot item is a puff pastry with salmon and spinach and a Chardonnay shallot sauce served warm. There's also a new dessert item here, which is a molten Valrhona chocolate cake with hazelnut crunch and a mango raspberry coulis that comes with this really cool presentation. The cake was by far our favorite item at this booth and I highly recommend getting it. In addition to the new items, there's also a lot of returning favorites this year. At Goshiki in Japan, the Sushi Donut and Wagyu Bun are both returning favorites. The Sushi Donut is a donut-shaped sushi featuring salmon, tuna, shrimp, cucumber, and a sesame seed over a decorated plate of wasabi aioli, sriracha aioli, and eel sauce. The Wagyu Bun is a steamed bun filled with American Wagyu beef served with green siso sauce. At the Painted Panda in China is the Char Siu Pork Bun, which is also delicious. Gourmet Landscapes in Canada has a delicious roasted bone marrow, which is a unique and tasty item to try if you haven't had it before. It comes with onion marmalade, pickled mushrooms, and a petite lettuce. Over at the American Pavilion is the Artist Table, where you can get the Hummingbird Cake. This is a banana and pecan cake dipped in cream cheese icing with a caramel sauce and a warm pineapple compote. But these are just a few of my favorites that I've tried so far, and I haven't been able to try everything yet. So if I missed any of your favorites, let me know and I'll be sure to try them out next year. In addition to all of the food and entertainment, there's also a ton of art galleries and markets all throughout the park where you can shop or just browse through some amazing artwork. Near the Creation Shop is one of my favorite art markets. They have a bunch of really cool statues here like Olaf and Steamboat Willie, and some amazing coffee tables themed after Beauty and the Beast, The Seven Dwarves, Peter Pan and Wendy, The Lost Boys, and Captain Hook aboard a pirate ship. And this one, which is a collection of Disney villains. I just want to buy them all. But there's a ton of other markets with beautiful artwork of all kinds. And you can even meet some of the talented artists and watch them work. There's also some Festival of the Arts merchandise available in some of the shops. 
There's a new spirit jersey that says, make every day a work of art. A new festival of the arts backpack, a corksicle tumbler, a Disney trading pin with Mickey, a figment coffee cup with purple paint running down the side, figment keychains, this adorable figment ornament, a figment baseball hat, a figment plushie, another figment cup, but this one with colored pencils, another figment sweater, a figment munchling, and a figment t-shirt that celebrates all the different types of art. Plus, there's also some merch specifically for annual pass holders like this figment Disney trading pen and this figment t-shirt that has all of the Epcot countries on it. If you made it this far in the video, drop a little artist palette in the comments below to say hello. I would also love it if you would hit the like button and subscribe if you found this information helpful and would enjoy more helpful guides like this to help you plan your most magical Disney trip. If you're going to be spending even more time at Epcot and would like to see everything that Epcot has to offer, then you'll want to check out my absolute guide to Epcot that just popped up on the screen. In this video, we'll go through each and every single one of the rides and attractions to help you plan your day. Until next time, everyone, I hope you have an incredible day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.